as I went, <coughs> excuse me, you know, I can go all week, fine, as soon as I get up here on the platform, every single Sunday, end up with a frog in my throat, every, <laughs> and by afternoon it's gone. <laughs> but, uh, <coughs> so excuse my water. froggy throat this morning. No, I don't. I don't need it right now, John. Okay. If I do, I'll give you a signal. But thank okay. you. I was going through uh, some of my old wild sermons, and I came across one that I I did some time ago, and I just liked the idea. I remember when I first gave. I liked the idea of the subject, and uh, I thought, so I'm going to remake uh, this a little bit and share it with you for one reason, because I like it. Uh, you know, I have a problem with God. He's just so huge, so big, so amazing. I have a hard time getting my mind around him. The try to comprehend God, that a mortal man in our feeble brains cannot even begin to comprehend God. That's why we're in awe of him, because he goes beyond what we could possibly imagine. I, he he throws, throws worlds around like marbles. And with his breath, he creates life. But because of all of that, there are times I, as much as I try, uh, I, I just can't comprehend. But Jesus is someone I can identify. Here was here when Jesus walked on this earth. See, it hasn't even been that long, and yet uh, uh, we we have a hard time. I watched uh, with some interest uh, the uh, visit of the popes in different countries, and here, the, and uh, you watch it, and you see the bowing the tears, the kissing of the ring. Everyone always seems to love him. But you know, I bet no one ever asked him to go fishing. Hmm. Well, that's just the Pope. Just imagine God. What do I have in common with him? Uh, he's not someone that I would go fishing with, or camping with, because it's just too much. But Jesus is. Just look at the different references. We're told to hold God in, reference, in uh, reverence, and to fear him. Now I could have to do a whole sermon maybe sometime on this idea of fearing God. It, it's a complicated thing. It's uh, both to be in awe of him, that kind of fear, but also with some actual fear involved. And like I say, it would take a sermon to, to even start on that subject. Uh, you, uh, you wouldn't go up and shake his hand when you met God. You would bow down before him. Perhaps kiss his feet if we were really uh, nerve enough. Uh, but look at the difference. In referring to Jesus, Jesus, or you call it, or called the friend of sinners. He says, Come to me and I will give you rest. 
Jesus who went around doing good. He fried fish for his friends on the beach. And greater love hath no man than this, that he gave his life for his friends. You ever notice the word friends there? He, Jesus, is someone I can be a friend with. Jesus walked here and talked here, probably <coughs> stubbed his toes here. If there were band-aids back in that day, I'm sure, and all of his uh, walking around through the countryside, he used, would have used a lot of them. Um, I almost can feel him and touch him and experience him. Uh, he, he left actual footprints on this earth. Uh, well, I, I can feel, almost experience it. And so I want to tell you about my Jesus. And to tell you, you can be like him. One of the more familiar uh, Bible verses is found in Luke 2.52. Some of you could quote that. It says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and mind. Uh, that covers a whole lot of years of what he did. One of the more familiar verses. Now let's follow that passage and see where it leads us. But I, but I want to turn it around a bit. Let me start with Jesus increased in stature, physically. And this verse covers, as I said, many years in the life of Jesus. This takes him from child to man. And Jesus definitely became a man. I, I don't care much for many of the paintings or word pictures of Jesus that I see today. Uh, so often they make him look and seem weak and soft. And believe me, Jesus was none of these things. He grew up, grew up in the hard physical worker of the carpenter shop. He hit the wrong nail at times and left bruise. Uh, often when he went up to Jerusalem, and that's exactly what it was because Jerusalem was on a mountain, uh, or he went over to the Jordan, he walked hundreds of miles to get there. I always pull up to the mailbox when I go home so I can not get out of my car and get the mail. Well, this was a physical man. <laughs> he walked hundreds of miles. Uh, I once fasted for two weeks many years ago. Uh, it's not easy. In the fourth chapter of Matthew, it says, Jesus was led out into the desert and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Almost a month and a half. Jesus fasted out in the desert. And after that, in his weakened state, which is always the case, in his weakened, weakened state, Satan came and tempted him, and Jesus stood strong. I get hungry, and, uh, and you dangle a steak in my face, I'm, I'm gone. But do you notice it's always for us that when Satan came and tempted him, it was when he was in a weakened state. And I see that today. When Satan really goes after us, he sees us in a weakened state and he finds the time and the way and he wants to attack you when you're weak. 
You think you could be strong enough to do that to fast 40 days? Jesus was a strong man. Towards the end of Jesus' earthly life, after being beaten fiercely, he carried that 300-pound cross on his back. How many of us have taken good enough care of our bodies to hold a candle to the physical Jesus? We don't really take very good care of our physical selves. And the book, book says that we should. But Jesus was a everyone's man. Uh, he's a man that I can follow. He's a man that anyone could follow. And it is in that strength that he was able to be loving, caring, and gentle. He was a man men could follow. But in an out-of-the-time era, he loved the women and the children. And he thought of them as important. And in that day, that was not a common thought. It doesn't take toughness to bully another or to, to fight. It takes strength to be gentle and to be kind. And that's something definitely we need to learn. In an in-your-face day, we need to learn that not being tough, uh, that's not being touched, that's just being mean. Don't get me started on bullying. I started on that early today. If you want me to get started, and talk about that. But I want to tell you, it's not just children. People today, and I hope you don't fall into it often, bully. saying several things that I could go off on tangents with this morning, and I, I don't have time to do that. He increased in strength and in wisdom. Wisdom is a uh, commodity that is both missing and misunderstood in the world today. We stress knowledge, <coughs> but what we really need is wisdom. Some of the People that have lack of knowledge, I've known to be some of the wiser people in the world. We stress knowledge, but we need wisdom. Jesus was a boy that grew wise. I believe uh, he was a typical boy. I believe you saw him as a child out there with uh, trying to hit a target with a sling, laughing, joking, and roughhousing with his friends. Because Jesus was just like us. But he became wise as he grew. There's an account in Luke that I find very interesting, where Jesus, <coughs> excuse me, where Jesus was 12 and he took off without his parents' permission. Now that's a typical boy. Isn't it? This was Jesus. When his parents finally found him, he was in the temple teaching and asking the elders questions. I see a boy that did wrong but a boy seeking wisdom, the boy God. Whenever I think of that story, I'm reminded of personal stories uh, of, of times <clears throat> that, uh, that we do wrong, but we grow from it. Uh, I think maybe maybe I'd share this. 
I've shared it before, but I love the story. Well, our son passed away when he was young. Uh, would spend several months at a time in the Children's Orthopedic Hospital in Seattle. <coughs> um, one day, Judy and I left his room to go have lunch in the hospital cafeteria. And when we returned, we saw his room full of doctors and nurses. I found it. There were 12 doctors and nurses in his room. And we thought something must be terribly wrong. So we hurried to see what the problem was. And we saw there 11 year old Eric sitting on his bed with a Bible in his lap, teaching the doctors and nurses many who were won through the wisdom of a boy of wisdom that had to be about his father's business. That thrills me when I think of that. People touched, people saved. We become wise. Knowledge converted to wisdom wins people. We need to understand the difference between wisdom and knowledge. Uh, even Mr. Webster's dictionary says, knowledge is what one knows in facts and information. And it's very simple and straightforward, but look at the difference between that and wisdom. Mr. Webster defines wisdom as depth, discernment, insight, judgment, prudence, sense, understanding, enlightenment and reason. Jesus grew in wisdom. All of those things. Uh, knowledge is a very good thing, but wisdom is a wonderful thing. I can know an awfully lot and still not have much wisdom to share. Knowledge is a knowing a fact. Wisdom is understanding how to use that fact. I've even uh, learned that to show, uh, to be shown wrong can lead to wisdom. Jesus may have been the most knowledgeable person to ever walk on earth, but without the wisdom, he could not ever have changed it. He always was wiser than his enemies. They would get so frustrated. Uh, I love the point where the Pharisees would question him, and talk to him, and he would answer and, and the questions, and they would get so frustrated and upset, they would go out and tear their clothes and pour ashes over their head. Uh, he knew when to back off and when to take a stand. He knew when to speak up and when to shut up. He knew when to speak and when to listen. May we learn to become receptacles of wisdom. And then Jesus grew not only in stature and in wisdom, but in favor with God. And this is simply uh, doing and being what God asks us to do, and uh, we call it righteousness. Every night in my prayers, uh, I ask Jesus to lead me in paths of righteousness. Being right with God. Uh, that favor, that word favor simply means to win approval. My dad was a well-known uh, man, well-honored and well-written man. I'm sure that he was a, a great man. All my life I tried to win approval of my father. But dad was not one to voice his approval. And it was uh, not until the end of his life, in his last days, that he ever said he was proud of me. But I tried. Well, just imagine Jesus trying to live up to his dad. 
And you talk about difficult. Uh, I've wondered if Jesus didn't wonder at times if his father was proud of him. There's a lot to live up to, but I know that God was very proud of his son. He held his son in favor, even with us. I think that sometimes God gets very disgusted at how we live, but he doesn't hold a grudge. Jesus did what his father asked him to do, do we? God asked him to withstand temptation, and he did. God asked him to be humble, and he was. God asked him to suffer, and he did. And God did not always say yes to him. As we see in the garden, when Jesus is asking, is there any other way uh, of doing this? And said, but not my will, that thine be done. God asked him to die on the cross and there take on the sins of the world, and he did. He grew in stature and ways wisdom and in favor with God and in favor with man. It's important as a Christian not only to be in favor with God, but to be in favor with man. You not need to show the world you're a Christian. Jesus has not yet won the approval of all of mankind. But every day he reaches out with loving arms saying, Come unto me. Do you like him? It's not enough to love him. I, I think you need to learn to like him. I'd like to go fishing with Jesus. My Lord, my God, and my friend. Let's stand. Our dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for Jesus. Uh, I just thank you that he does understand every pain we go through. He's experienced every problem that we have. So I thank you. So be with us now. Help us to walk in his footprints. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Do we have any announcements that need to be made this morning? Don't think so. Uh, it's still a repeat on um, anybody who's on, on contact on Facebook. Pick up one of the um, one of the marketing things that are on there and just pass it around. I've done it a few times this week, and if if we all just spend like five minutes, once or twice a week on Facebook, just take it and share it to somebody. Take it and share it to somebody and ask them to pass it on because okay. it's a good program. Okay, let's sing our closing song. I thought you were starting to sing, but you were yawning. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood, joined heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. John, I almost signaled you.